this video we're going to be breaking down Astro and Prodigy in the Madden 25 kickoff challenge. This is a day one of the live event. And Astro is going to be showing up to this game, kind of doing some unique things on defense that I wanted to kind of take some time to learn from. And then also Prodigy has kind of always been a tough, tough player, really a really good regs player. And uh, when they're when normally good regs players play good defense, play pretty good defense, and they also freestyle really well. Astro is also widely considered to be probably the best, probably top five offensive player in the world over the last four or five years. Uh, really just consistently shown that he's one of the better offensive players in the world. And he always has a really, really good blitz, really, really good defense. He kind of plays defense a little bit differently. I think the way that he sees defense is if he can force a turnover, if he can get one or two stops a game, he feels pretty good. So he is going to be, I believe, in he might be in Falcons offensive playbook to start here. I did want to break this down uh, real, just real quick. Prodigy is going to start the game out here in some match coverage and you are seeing some players go to this now so as you see here prodigy is going to be in this 4-3 even 6-1 defense this defense is going to be really effective this year and the reason why is because you could send both of these guys off the edge and get good six-man pressures but also the other thing that's really good about this is a send three or send four shed defense here what astro or uh, what prodigy is doing is he's going to run a, a send four shed defense out of cover four quarters where basically we have these inside quarters outside quarters on the outside now what happens is though this section of the field is going to play a the whole section of the field is going to be matching but this section is going to play a box check and astro is going to show a one play touchdown type of combo here uh, so we'll take a look at his combo so we can kind of see if you're looking to beat match this is something you could do so i don't this might be a slant route we have a drag route and then we have a post as you see it pulls this inside quarter in and what astro is wanting to do is you see how this guy is delaying his match there is a window here that he's trying to hit to basically kind of put this out in front of the receiver and rat catch this almost hits it here and Wiggins just I think from a speed perspective catches up and is able to swat the ball uh, out of the air so kind of some I feel like the first drive um, is really significant in any kind of Madden game because you kind of get a feel for what your opponent wants to do do they want to send five out every play do they want to play match do they want to play man do they want to just kind of mix a bunch of different coverages together do they want to blitz do they want to play shed defense those are some of the things that you're trying to kind of identify now right here he's going to go to one of my i think this is the clear cut one of the better route combos in the game it's the it's the post drag in the middle of the field and then we have a streak and a short corner so what we know about Madden 25, here he sends five, and watch the sheds that he will get from 6-1. You see just instant, gets a nice shed here, but essentially what's happening? Well, we have a seam streak. Seam streaks in this game are super powerful. We have a stemmed corner route. Stemmed corner routes get underneath a lot of zones, very effective. You can throw it right over here. Oftentimes they're gonna have to switch stick onto this player and defend that, and guess what that leaves open? It leaves all this space and really this seam open. So here, Asher sees the seam streak. He's going to throw it a little bit late and is going to get stopped. Yeah, I do believe Astro is in Falcon's book. I think a lot of pro players right now that were in Colts to start of the year are shifting over to the Falcons playbook. We are going to be doing an offensive ebook out of the Falcons book. We have one out of Colts as well already. And then we are going to be doing defensive V books on 6 1. And I think we have one, we have that literally being recorded as we speak in our school community. And then we also are going to be, uh, we actually have already dropped um, the 3 4 odd that Astro is going to be using in this game. So if you guys want to check out all those ebooks, you get everything by being a, me a member of our school site for just 10 bucks. The link is going to be in the description if you want to check it out. Love this combo here, a little motion over, kind of creating bunch strong offset, if you will. And now the purpose of this flat route is one of the biggest counters to this combo has been to utilize a soft squat on this player. 
because the soft squat will match this corner, okay? Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this defender in conflict, and so if this defender drops down to the flat, which he would if he was a soft squat, the corner will be open. If, let's say it's like a traditional cover for quarters, this guy should stay on this route, but we canceled the match and uh, by motioning this running back over as well. So if this guy drops back and there's no flat defender, this is going to be open. Now, if this guy drops back and there's a flat defender, this corner can be thrown over here. So it's kind of a really important piece of how Astro is going to counter how Prodigy is playing defense here. So you see, if you look, it's just drop zone off rip. We know now we see the conflict player. He's drifting back. This is wide open. We should throw a corner out right here to the right side. A little late on the read. Actually sees his post open. And one thing that is very common, too, that you're seeing in these high-level games is they are anticipating the switch stick significantly. They are, they are kind of putting a significant amount of, amount of um, their offense into trying to anticipate switch sticks so that they don't kind of throw... Um, throw an inadvertent inadvertent pick for example and here astro miss, misses <laughs> misses the extra point i don't know why he's on that kick meter now prodigy is going to be in a new offense actually um i want to say i don't know exactly what playbook he's in but this trips tight end flex formation is um we actually miss a lot of his first drive with the uh, technical timeout that happened but he's going to be in this trip side in flex. Um, Astro is going to be in 3-4 odd. We're going to talk about that maybe on the next possession a little bit more. But gets down here. And the reason why Astro is in 3-4 odd, or actually, no, he is going to be in 3-3 cub, I believe. He's in 3-4 odd. Um, yeah, he's a, he's actually in 3-3 cub. So that must be his trips defense. Sometimes, sometimes guys will have better, you know, different forms that they like against bunch-based offenses versus trips-based offenses. So the reason that we're running, he's running this trips tight and flex is for this play right here. You got a sharp post, you got the cheap motion, and that's a that should have been a switch stick pick. Honestly, he just kind of didn't quite get the job done there. Now Prodigy actually makes his extra point, and um, and Astro is going to be in this. So you see here again, this motion over cancels match. You get this. Astro loves that combo. I, I don't know about that one. That's like a drag slant post. I feel like the space is not the greatest, but this is another reason why these guys are in this playbook here for this play with the cheat motion. And here you see him going back to that combo. Look at that right side guy. Real nice. Now, the one thing I think about Falcons is I don't think they have a four strong. So I think you always have to motion into four strong, which would probably, in my opinion, be a little bit of a weakness. Bunch strong is just so good. Love that combo. And you're seeing Astros kind of using very simple combos to space the field horizontally to open up throwing lanes. Because what you want to do this year, especially this year, I've never seen a Madden where the underneath passing is more powerful than this year. I mean, they just, the zones just cannot, I mean, just it's very difficult for them to cover some of these plays. Look at this combo right here. So if he switch sticks over here, and then we have the seam streak. I'm telling you, I really believe, at least at this point in the year, if you don't have a seam streak on pretty much every single play that you're running, you're probably doing your offense a disservice because seam streaks, I've never seen them be better. I've never seen seam streaks be better. I've never seen underneath passing as a whole concept be better. Just stretching the underneath horizontal space is really, really effective. Little red zone, see what he's cooking up here in the red zone. Little run. Nothing really there. 6-1 is widely considered to be the best red zone defense in the game. He's going to go to a touch pass, try to get outside here. Man, it did not work at all. And now we're in a third and long. And this is, you know, if you're Prodigy in this game, this is what you want. I mean, you want to get them to about here. I mean, this is a great position for, for Prodigy. Third and goal, it's hard to score down here. You got your 6-1, which is, which is really an advantage to the defense here just because of the way the space works. Look at this combo. Little hitch, little seam streak, little slant. That slant might be open late. And I don't know how Prodigy did not switch stick to that. But he does, he is able to get in there for seven. And that's kind of a traditional combo that's been really good in the red zone for the last couple of years is that 
basically a slant on one side and then a hitch on the numbers. Really, really effective. All right, so now we're going to get a good look at um, at Prodigy's offense and kind of talking about what he's doing. And, and I think he's in the – I want to say he's he's either in Lions or he's in – He's an Eagles uh, playbook. Okay, so here, motion over, little trips, trips, uh, power play. But you'll see here that this trips tight end flex is kind of the formation that these guys really like. Now, this is this is kind of the new trips tight end, and the reason this is really good is because of all the cheap motion plays within it, and also again the seam streaks. Now, he's going to audible to Bunch. He has wide curl, which is widely considered to be one of the better plays in Bunch this year. Um, and there you see the screamer from Astros. So let's talk a little bit about Astros defense here. Um, actually, no, this was 3 through Cubs. So this is just your standard send five out of 3 through Cubs. We do have a full ebook on this on our, our school community as well. But as you see, he sends five out. This thing will scream at him. And the coverage from 3 through Cubs is really good. So 3 through Cubs is really effective, especially against trips. Trips, uh, trips tight end or any kind of spread set just because you get a really favorable alignment within the play. You ever get that slant and honestly kind of an interesting interesting drop there. Let's see here. All right, so right there you get this match. Um, I want to cover that real quick. So let's let's explain what's going on here with this match. So one of the reasons why Astro is in this specific coverage um, or specific defense is to call this coverage. And what you're going to see here is you're going to see this really, really, really good match uh, by this quarter. That is a do. That is a do. So this is an inside quarter. They put this guy on a seam flat, and then they put this guy on an outside quarter, and this matches everyone on the trip side really, really well. So you basically just have to defend the tight end. So that that coverage, and I've broken that coverage down in my ebooks. I've broken that coverage down before and in, in, in other places. That coverage right there really does play uh, play very well. Okay, I don't think I don't think Prodigy is in. I'm gonna figure out what playbook he's in. So Astro ends up getting the stop, and now he's kind of in full control of this game. Is it in the Raiders book? I think. Yeah. It, okay, so Prodigy is Prodigy's in the Raiders offensive playbook. Has bunch in there. Astro scores. Do some drawings here. So we'll see kind of I'll show see what see what Prodigy does. I think this game does he actually I think Prodigy does actually make kind of a, a run here or a push. But you're seeing some of the problems with Trips tied in this year. It, it is good. It's it, Trips is always gonna be good. Um and there you see there's that combo again. I love this. Look at that post, slant, boom. Post corner drag, one of it's just such a good combo. Okay, so trips tight end flex. I believe this is a hundred percent pretty confident. This is in Raiders book, but you watch. So this motion it does cancel that quarter stuff. So that's why these cheap motions are so valuable. They they kill cover too, and right there, oh. So the cheap motion and trip specifically is valuable because it kills cover two to the tight end side, which is really effective for taking away tight end corners. It also kills the match quarter um, that I was just explaining out of the seam flat stuff. So some of the most fundamental ways that somebody wants to try to play defense against trips, they can't really do that against the cheap motion in this trips tight end flex. And then, and, the, and then also you have one of the best routes in trips every year is the tight end post. But in this year's game, the tight end post is like that. And so it's just not very, not as effective. So here we go. This is a cover three beater. And you see there's as match quarters as the tight, the tight end corner. 
Yeah, I think this Raiders book is really good. Because you also have the regular trips. It's almost like a Patriots, Patriots trips. I believe, I think McDaniels isn't, I'm pretty sure McDaniels is still over at the Raiders. So, yeah, the motion wide post is, is the reason you run, run this book. And the reason you really, reason you run the formation here, you see here's a, a standard trips combo verticals with a tight end drag. You might put the tight end in a corner. Nope, tight end drag. Crosser. And there you see there. That's that match quarter. It just, it just, it's just hard to beat that match quarter. It like looks like it's gonna be open, and then the, the match just, just kills it. And I want to say he's in Samuel Blitz as a base, so he seam flats this guy. He's got this guy probably on like a, I don't know what that dude's on. Okay, little man up here. Look at that. There's that cloud to take away that tight end post. Really good defense by Stro. And Prodigy's trying to basically just work this ball down the field and try to take as much time as he can. This should take to the two. Yeah. So you see this um, this audible over to bunch to Y curl probably. Astros choosing not to flip. Kind of interesting. Some of the reason why you would do that is just you don't want to, you know, I mean, it's it's hard to get your adjustment set up once you flip. But yeah, you basically you basically have this uh, post motion Y post play. You have verticals, and then some other kind of unique things. But I think that was a hot routed post. That post actually fried. I'm starting to notice that the hot route master post on the outside receiver. If you don't stem him, if you just keep him at like a you just hot route a post snap the ball kind of thing. I feel like that post is probably one of the best man rounds in the game. The other thing about Raiders book is you have you have some pretty good runs. You also have ace slot offset in here. Man, that Raiders book, I might have to look at this. I love this stemmed corner out of level sale. Trying to get the short corner to the corner. If it's a cloud, then we can throw the running back, try to turn up field. You see here, running backs open. Touchdown. So that's a big drive for, for Prodigy. And now kind of pressure, not pressure, but if you're Astro here, you really want to get seven. You got plenty of time in this game. In this game, a minute is a long time. Um, just with how much the sidelines are able to be thrown. He's got one timeout, minute 20. He's probably thinking, I can go score seven here. Prodigy actually changes his defense, and he goes to the traditional double mug look. And so you're going to see these disengage blitz, throw that tight end, good read by Stro. about midfield. And again, you got this cheap motion here from this formation as well. It's that nice high ball. Another thing you'll see these guys do a lot is they will high ball if it's a... If it's a situation where they have a little slight step on the player crossing the field, they might highball it to kind of get it some more leverage over the over the defender. Do a little tight end short corner. Looking for that there, that drag, and you see how. I mean, you're just seeing this drag just it just wears out, and I'm telling you, man, if if you truly work the underneath. In this game, it is so hard to guard the underneath and guard post routes and stuff like that. Well, inside zone. Astros in a position, as I said, I mean, he got down here in basically 40 seconds. The, um, you know, here you just want to make sure you take Prodigy's timeouts. You know, at the very least, you want to, you want to try to, you, you really just don't want to give him the ball back at all if he can help it. And honestly, a field goal here is probably fine. For Astro, he really likes this jet jet pass. Astro is always going to find some little things that that really nobody, you know, very few people know about offensively. Um, things like the jet, you know, jet touch pass or a specific red zone combo. Those are some of the things. So you see how he's motioning here, and look at this wheel route. There's just nobody over here. Now look at the combo. We should see a slant here. 
Yeah, I see that slant, and then there, there's the hitch. And high ball, high ball, high ball, high ball, high ball, high ball. Very, you know, second time he's thrown that combo, pretty much. And it's been pretty much the same result every time. So Prodigy's going to have about 18 seconds left before half. See if he can do anything. Kind of how he just chooses to play it. And I mean, you do have one timeout, so I mean, you throw a, a big, big, get a big pass in the middle field. That could be a kind of setting that up here. Tries to throw right at him. Almost an interception. If he catches that interception, that's probably a field goal for Astro. If he's able to turn around with that, and that would be a huge, would have been a huge change. Just kind of in the trajectory of the game because that could have very close to a three possession game at that point. Going back to that PA cross play. Seam streak. That's a good read. The reason that's a good read is because I wish you would have done that the first play. But the reason that's a really good read is because now you have four seconds, but you've advanced the ball up to here. So now there's a little bit more of a realistic throw for you. Looking for uh, kind of an interesting combo, though, I will say. Just going to throw it up one-on-one. -on -one. Paul Krause going to say no way. And that's going to be the half. All right, so jumping into the second half here, Astro is going to be on defense starting out. And Prodigy kind of coming out in a random formation there with an inside zone. Uh, I think that was that split. Was that split pro? And I'm going to get back into his trips. Haven't really seen much from his offense. I mean... I just, but sometimes, and this is a cool combo here, almost a pick though. I'll throw right at a three wreck. And so pretty much very early in this first possession, he's already on a fourth down. And you see, I mean, it's just, it's not necessarily, I don't know. I'm trying to think what's going on offensively for him. But it's, it's really just, like, look at this. He's got this backward zig. I just feel like you can't. Yeah, like Lee. <laughs> I mean, these windows are tight, tight windows that he's throwing into. And it's to a degree, I feel almost, I don't know if it's predictable. I don't think that's the best word. I feel like it's just there's not enough. He's not attacking enough areas on the field, and he cannot beat man coverage or the match that Astro is employing. If it's either match or man, one of the two, right? He can't he, – he, the routes don't get open fast enough. Astro is able to use her a lot of stuff in the middle of the field. And so <laughs> – nah, I don't know about that throw. Yeah, it's just – there's just not much, not much right now for Prodigy offensively. This third and 20. See, the way I would play this third and 20 – I mean, I know you obviously – if they give you the first down, you take the first down, but – the thing I'm starting to notice about trips is it's a lot of long developing routes, which is probably why you see and they if they would if he would do more stuff like that, where it's just a quick drag of the middle field, high low read. I feel like the trips guys, and myself included, like when I run trips, it's a lot of long developing routes. There needs to be more quick hitting plays. When trips was really really good, I think at its peak, man twenty one, man nineteen. Um, there was so many like quick hitting routes, quick hitting play calls. Now it's really big time. Like it's deep corners, deep crossers, but let's work this underneath game a little bit more like the running back streak out of the backfield. You know, when Kobo won the belt last year in trips, it was a lot of quick stuff. If you watch what he actually was doing, it was a lot of quick reads there. You see there, that post beats that beats that man. I'm starting to think that Astro might be running more man coverage. Because the match coverage would not get beat by that post. Red zone position. A little split close. Short corner route. 
Yeah. <laughs> See, if you streak that fullback out of the backfield, that's probably a touchdown. Split pro offset week. There's definitely some stuff in this book. I will say I'm going to definitely be checking this book out. I like this audible and the stretch. There's the nickel corners over here. So that should be a good run. And Prodigy's one of those guys. I'm pretty sure Prodigy laps up with Drini. So he's always going to have, you know, defense specifically. His defense is, is always something to look at, take a look at. He does kind of play um, not, not similar to Drini, but in terms of just he's got a base formation, but then he audibles around like a lot of stuff that you just don't see very much. Fourth and goal. Now you're kind of in a tough spot. I mean, it's it's going to go no hot. I mean, pretty much has to go for this, but that's why I probably wouldn't run the ball on third down. And now look at the clock. Just let's, yeah. And now we, I mean, this is a huge timeout. That's a huge timeout. When you're losing in the second half, you do not want to be, you can't be calling timeouts in the third quarter when you're losing in the second half. And, it's just a such a hush. I just feel like I almost rather take a delay a game there, you know. And I I do think that you see sometimes in these games, it, it's these are obviously you know the best players in the world, and I do think you kind of see some in these games like these just mental mistakes and their Astro is able to kind of get a little bit of pressure, forced to throw early, gets that yellow in the middle of the field, able to take that away. And now we have Astro basically just needs to get out of this area of the field, though. So throws a fade early. And I'll tell you what, one of the things that I think is interesting about Astro, I also would say Skimbo is like this. And I'm trying to think if there's anyone else like this, maybe John. But I definitely think Astro. You've seen this since Madden 22 with Astro. He never misses a streak. He never misses a streak. If you leave a streak open, he hits it every single time. Right there. I just think that's one of the more underrated things that he does that a lot of people don't do um, offensively is they just never miss that streak. And one of I've actually heard Skimbo say this. I think one of his basic rules is on every single play he has a streak on the field. And the reason why is because if you blow a coverage, it's it, it, you know it's very easy to take the top off the defense with a streak. Uh, looks like Stroh is going to go ahead and take this to the fourth. And this is kind of the closeout drive. I mean, this is if he goes down, even if he's you know you you want a seven here. If you score seven, the game's pretty much cooked. If you score three. It's two touchdowns and a two two-point conversions. And obviously we saw Prodigy's red zone offense was kind of not effect, not just didn't work. Um, so, yeah, I just, I'm always interested and, and almost surprised when I watch these games back and I see some, and see there he never misses a streak, never misses a streak. And see, the other thing about Astro a lot of times he'll especially on these streak routes if that he's reading it if they have a step he's going to try it even if you even if you knock it out you know he's going to put the ball rolling here his receiver can catch it now astra has also been known to throw some 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 crazy stuff but that being said i think he labs that stuff and he he knows what he can throw and what he can't throw so i've just always been impressed with the route combos from astro and just kind of the way he kind of, I don't know, just the way he plays the game is kind of interesting. The corner out there on the right side, good read. And you're seeing a lot of the, you know, they're not calling, he's not calling the same play, but he's calling similar plays. A little run there. And at this point, you know, Astro's trying to take the clock. His main concern is the clock. His secondary concern is to score seven. Um, but he won't. He's not going to wholesale run the ball. He'll still pass. It's one of his favorite plays. And oh, that was a bad then. 
See what I'm saying? That was a very bad interception. Situationally, you take a sack, you step up. Like, you can't throw that pick. And I don't feel like Prodigy did anything. I mean, he switch-ticked onto the quarter, which was a good switch-tick, but ah, just that's just a really bad interception. That's just a really, really bad interception. And, of course, very next play. What is Prodigy doing? I guess he's, oh. Uh, I mean, he does have a step on it. I think Lawrence just underthrows it. Yeah, I think Lawrence just literally underthrew that. I mean, he did have a step on it. It sucks that you throw a pick there, though. I mean, if he catches that, if he rack catches that, he's able to catch that and get a touchdown. That completely changes the game. Him throwing that pick right there is really bad because now this is a clear, you know, because, again, he only has two timeouts. So he doesn't – the lack of three timeouts really affects you in these clock management situations down the, down the stretch. It's why you can't call – third quarter timeouts in an MCS game. I, I don't see I just don't see how you can how you can do that and win. Um, I, 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 I wish I could dig up a stat but I bet you if you call a third quarter timeout in an MCS game I would love to see the record. Players that have called third quarter timeouts in MCS games, what is their actual overall record? I bet you it's a losing record. Um, just because it's when you get down as and not just not just calling a third quarter timeout but also he's losing right he's not only losing by one score but he's losing by two scores the timeouts are the main thing you have the main tool you have in your in your bag to be able to stay in a game that you're behind and so i just think i just think that that that, that timeout call was really costly for him uh, because because now astro is able to take a lot more clock and Prodigy's hands kind of get tied here situationally, um, especially with the interception. So, you know, I just just didn't love that. I love this combo right here. I love the cheap motion here against cover two. He's got the seam streak. That's such a good route. Yeah, I'm, I'm telling you, the, the seam streaks are unbelievably wide open. I mean, it is. And, and, and this is also, I think, good by, you know, Astro just taking his clock and He's still passing the ball a little bit, but at the end of the day, this is about the clock. Especially at this point, you're down here. We're not. We're not. We're not playing. We're just taking our three. At this point, Prodigy has to start taking his timeouts. I'm surprised that he's not. I think he's waiting. I think he'll take it after this play. And ooh, yeah. Oh, he's not taking timeouts. I guess he's just done. I guess he's just done. Okay, there you go. Well, GG's, boys. That is how Astro defeated Prodigy. Obviously, it would have been tough to come back. I just feel like some clock management stuff, and then obviously just some interceptions. I mean, the, the, main, the main turn of the game was when Astro threw that pick, and then Prodigy threw it right back to him the next play. But a lot of things you can kind of take away from this in terms of why Trip struggles at the highest level, I do think is because it's not able to beat the Blitz well. It's not able to... And, I, and it may not just be it, it might not be the formation it might literally be just the route combos these guys are putting on the field whereas bunch has a lot more quick developing stuff takes advantage of seam streaks so anyways those are some different tips and takeaways from from this game but astro is going to move on uh to the next stage of the kickoff challenge <laughs>